All right, hello everyone. So I want to do another short lecture, this time about a Holocaust survivor. It's of course one of the most important topics that I cover in all my classes. And you know, I'm very proud to say that where I teach at Cypress College, we actually hold an annual Yom HaShoah event. We have an entire website called rememberthaholocaust.org. Um, and we have photos that were taken by a retired professor, Clifford Lester, including this one that you see here, of countless numbers of survivors and their stories and their testimonials. Um, and this is the story of Helen, who was born in Germany in 1921. And because she was born in Germany, listening to her stories is, you know, I like listening to their stories and seeing what kind of historical context I can bring their stories in to have students learn about something you know, about what had happened. And I think listening to her testimonials, it is this idea that it never starts with gas chambers. And what I mean by that is Helen grew up in Germany, right? A lot of the Jews who were murdered were those Jews who, who came from were other places, Poland and, you know, France and Romania. But inside Germany, she was old enough, 1921, you know, Hitler was coming into power in 1932. And so by 1934, 35, 36, you know, she's 15, 16, 17 years old. She remembers what it was like to see things change. And there were a couple really critical events that a young woman of a teenage year would be able to see this happening. And one of the things that I really want to focus on in this very brief lecture is these ideas of the Nuremberg Law. So starting in 1935, you know, I'm often surprised most of my students have heard of the Holocaust, uh, but not many have ever heard of these Nuremberg Laws. But this was many years before World War II broke out, before the Holocaust happened. And these were laws set in Germany, you know, that, sh that, that for, for example, I just listed a few here, that forbade Jews to marry what were called citizens of German blood. Um, so one of the things that Hitler was very specific about is he wanted to make sure that Jews would not marry non-Jews in Germany. But of course, it didn't end with that. He told Jews in Germany, even if you were uh, living in Germany for, for decades and your family has been there for decades, that you are no longer a German citizen. So these aren't individuals who, you know, came into Germany and all of a sudden Hitler said, no, 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 you're not a citizen. These are folks who had been citizens for years, generations, and simply because they were Jewish were told you're no longer a German citizen. Jews were told that they can't have the right to vote or hold public office. And, you know, there were many other of these Nuremberg laws that were very profound that a, a lady who's 15, 16 years old would remember and see how things changed. One account of Helen is she remembers when there was a newspaper and reading a newspaper in Germany told them, you know, treat Jews differently and how things changed so dramatically after reading those newspapers. But perhaps the most striking story that I heard from her is the story of her firsthand descriptions of Kristallnacht. So I want to kind of talk about her story because so many people have heard of Kristallnacht, but to hear the stories of the survivors and what they went through, their testimonials, I think is so much more powerful than just reading about it in a book. And so here we see her family, right? And one of the most important events she went through was, of course, in 1938, Kristallnacht, the night of broken glass. This is something many people are familiar with, but hearing it directly from her, her testimonials of what she went through is so powerful because she talks about, you know, how she's living there is, is a 16, 17 year old girl, right? Done nothing wrong her entire life. Her family had done nothing wrong their entire lives. And in the middle of the night, you know, people throw rocks into their window, break their window, and then she hears the Nazis running up their house, up to the second story of their house, she describes, and they grab her father, take her father from their home and put him in prison over Overnight, only luckily to be found the next day and released. But, you know, this, this is what was happening to people, you know, before the Holocaust had even begun. Another part of her story that really resonated with me is that just their livelihood as a family was through, through growing crops and food. And she, she accounts how the Nazis not only went in, just, you know, broke the windows, cracked things, went inside. Then they, 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 they took the food, the vegetables and everything that grew and they threw out the window like trash. To them, it was their livelihood, but they just got rid of it. And then, you know, finally, it was this other element that she discussed as well that, that I remember, which she said, 
friends wouldn't talk to her anymore. People who she knew for years just stopped, you know, interacting with her, you know, simply because she was Jewish. And, you know, one of the, the ideas that I often talk about is how important it was during the times leading up to, to the Holocaust, how, how people were separated based on race and religion and, and, and just seen as, as different simply because of their religion and how dangerous that is. So there's so much to learn from this. And I really encourage you as you watch these lectures and hear these people to, to learn a lot more. And you know, there's a lot more you can learn as you can see here on our like slide here, I'll, I'll show you where you can learn a lot more information about all of this. And one of the things I would really encourage you to do is check out this you know, website we have, right? Rememberthehollocaust.org. Uh, again, it, it's a former professor Clifford Lester is retired, um, who's taken an amazing number of photographs. And you can go on this website, you could read their testimonials, you can learn a lot more. If you want to learn just more narrative history of World War II, again, you could subscribe to my channel. I have a whole series of lectures just on World War II where you can hear a lot more stuff about it. And this is just a short in, a bit of information, but I think something important that can may hopefully get you started and, and thinking about a lot more. All right, thank you everyone. Um, have a great day and remember never stop learning this stuff. It's really important.